Welcome back, strangers. It's hard to imagine that a little over 50 years ago, the United States and Soviet Union were at the height of the space race, sending up satellites, astronauts, and putting men on the moon. But at what cost? Today, we're going to discuss the Lost Cosmonaut Conspiracy Theory. On April 12, 1961, the Soviet Union successfully launched cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin into orbit, making him the first official man in space. Four years earlier, the Soviet Union also launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite in space. The Soviet Union was dominating the United States in the space race, causing U.S. President John F. Kennedy to make the proclamation in 1962 that the United States would go to the moon before the end of the decade. Many believe that the Soviet's domination came after a series of fatalities and mission disasters. The Soviet Union was known not to publish their failures, and even attempted to cover up launch disasters, leaving some to question whether Yuri Gagarin was even truly the first man in space, or whether he was the first cosmonaut to survive the mission. The rumors of cosmonaut deaths and failed space flights began in December 1959, when a high-ranking Czech communist leaked information that three cosmonauts died in a converted R-5A rocket test. Five other cosmonauts were reportedly killed during different manned suborbital flights between 1958 and 1959. None of these deaths have been officially confirmed. The rumors continued to grow with deaths of multiple high-altitude parachutists, including the renowned Colonel Peter Dolgov, who died testing high-altitude safety equipment, which was falsely reported on a failed space mission. During the 1960s, the Judica Cordiglia brothers were two amateur Italian radio operators who came forward with audio recordings of radio transmissions from failed manned Soviet space flights. The two built a radio monitoring station in an old German bunker using scavenged equipment in Italy. They claimed to have the largest private collection of space mission recordings after years of monitoring and recording early Soviet and American missions. In their archive, they found nine instances of secret Soviet space missions that resulted in catastrophic failure or crew fatalities. A few of the brothers' recordings did occur during the time of the rumored secret Soviet missions. In 1960, the brothers intercepted an SOS Morse code distress signal from a cosmonaut orbiting Earth. NASA later confirmed the discovery of a Soviet orbital capsule that they said was unmanned and left over from earlier test missions. In April of 1961, days prior to Yuri Gagarin's famous space flight, another manned space capsule was recorded orbiting the Earth three times before entering the Earth's atmosphere by the brothers. This coincides with the rumored flight of Vladimir Lushyan, who some claim was the first successful man in space. However, his craft failed to maintain proper orbit, causing him to land in the People's Republic of China, where he was imprisoned for a year. By the time he was released, the Soviets had already declared Yuri Gagarin as the first man in space. Another strange incident occurred three weeks before Yuri Gagarin's successful mission. An ejector seat parachuted from a space capsule above the Soviet countryside, March 25, 1961. The villagers in the area were in awe at the discovery of what they thought was a dead cosmonaut after they had witnessed the space capsule re-entry overhead. The Soviet Union dismissed the body as their test dummy known as Ivan Ivanich, a dummy that was sent on multiple missions in space with some even including human voice recordings to test radio systems before Gagarin's spaceflight. Some of the more disturbing recordings the brothers have in their archive include what they believe is the radio transmission of a cosmonaut suffocating to death. Another is evidence of a manned space flight stuck drifting in deep space after the pilot lost control of the craft. The creepiest is the recording of a female cosmonaut saying, I am hot, as she burns up during re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. Despite the recordings lining up with other rumors and evidence of failed space missions, many experts are quick to discredit the brothers' archive as an elaborate hoax. Many recordings fail to use the proper Soviet Air Force terminology used by cosmonauts during missions and training. The recordings also contain numerous grammatical errors and disjointed sentences that do not appear to be spoken by a highly educated cosmonauts whose native language was Russian. Radio experts say there was no way possible that the amateur brothers could have recorded unique signals with their improvised radio network. The brothers' archive contains transmissions that no other government in the world have, 
Despite numerous countries possessing massive radio networks much more capable of intercepting radio signals from space, the recording of the woman cosmonaut burning up has an Italian accent leading many to think it's the brother's sister in the recording. The brother's story was picked up by an international radio station allowing them to profit off their story and supposed archives of the recordings. In 1967, the Soviet Union had an embarrassing disaster on a global stage when the Soyuz-1 parachute failed to properly open after re-entering the atmosphere, killing cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov. He became the first official flight fatality, but was he really the first? Reportedly, Komarov knew the space capsule was unsafe to fly, but did not want the mission to be delayed or scrubbed in fluid anyway. How many of these unsafe flights took place? In 1969, the Soviet Union continued to face global shame as the United States Apollo 11 successfully put men on the moon. Some claim that the Soviet Union attempted to beat the Americans to the moon with their new N-1 rocket on July 3rd, 1969. However, it exploded. Another rumor is that the second Soviet space crew attempted to reach the moon before the Americans but failed to achieve lunar orbit and overshot the moon. The Soviets officially claim all of their lunar test missions were either unmanned test flights or space probes. The Soviets officially ended its moon landing program in 1974. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, there have been numerous official leaks of their space program and secret failures. However, none of these leaks have officially confirmed the lost cosmonaut conspiracy. Today, the Russian government denies any knowledge of secret cosmonaut fatalities. What do you think, strangers? Do you think any of these incidences resulted in the secret death of Soviet cosmonauts? What about the brothers' radio recordings? Do you agree they were a hoax or evidence of a cover-up spanning over 50 years in multiple government and space agencies? Thanks, strangers, for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a like. Let us know your theories on the lost cosmonauts in the comments. Also, please subscribe and be sure to smash that bell button so you never miss one of our videos. It helps us out a lot. And as always, stay strange.